so we've been doing a lot of talking about uh, line three. I've, t- I've talked about line three several different times uh, on this on these live streams because it's it's an important topic to discuss. If you're unfamiliar with what line three is, it is the pipeline being constructed by Enbridge coming from the Canadian tar sands, which is the one of like the dirtiest uh, oil areas around. I don't really know what to call it. O- oil deposits. Uh, around and um, the original pipeline was pretty busted, broken. It needed a lot of repairs. Go figure, because when it comes to pipeline, it is not whether they will leak; it is when they will leak. Uh, and that's that's kind of what um, what what these folks are are fighting. And 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 it is primarily indigenous led. Uh, a lot of the activism, a lot of the organizing, and, and a lot of the disruptions of the work are are indigenous uh, led. I'm I'm just kind of scrolling down because there's a quote that I'm I'm gonna have to read. So I apologize if I'm not looking in, into the screen. I'm just kind of prepping that up. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so the uh, and, and it is going over a lot of indigenous land, and it is breaking a lot of laws. And in, in fact, there's actually. Uh, lawsuits that are out there that have pointed out that there has been no environmental impact survey, uh, that it ignores indigenous sovereignty. It actually ignores a treaty that the that that the indigenous people have with the United States government in regards to uh, not building things that cut through their sovereign lands that would prevent them from doing things like hunting, fishing, living. Um, and uh, and and raising crops and farming and, and harvesting those crops uh, within their land. So so in reality, what's happening uh, with with line three is is a massive treaty violation uh, that has been approved by Governor Waltz, Democratic Governor uh, Waltz in, um, in in Minneapolis, because Enbridge comes in and and their big claim to fame is well. Uh, we're going to bring jobs to the area. We're 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 job create. We're creating these jobs. So why would you get in the way of uh, job creation? Do you do you hate jobs? Do you hate working and uh, and earning a living? And there's fundamentally so many things fucking wrong uh, with with that statement. Because first and foremost, and this is part of the the problem that they uh, are facing in that region. Excuse me drop my pen uh, that they're facing in that region is the fact that the jobs are not being uh, sourced locally, right? The people that, that, that they're employing are, are not uh, local folks that live in the community, that live in the neighborhoods that they, um, that they're in. It's, it's actually folks coming in from outside and uh, it, you know, that is actually causing a, a number of, of problems as well. It's actually creating a hostile environment for indigenous people in that area. So let's go through these three things and then we'll get into uh, the the most recent uh, protests that just happened uh, in, in Minneapolis there. So first and foremost, um, the environmental impact survey. There has not been an environmental impact survey. And, you know, that's a that's a pretty major problem like you need to you we need to know how this is going to disrupt the environment and what countermeasures need to be taken into account um obviously the spills are going to get into watersheds they're going to get into the water system it's going to poison a lot of wildlife flora and fauna um none of that has been addressed and and quite frankly when it comes to capitalism that is not a concern that has never really been a concern they don't really care Right to them, it's like, oh, well, who gives a shit? Uh, We didn't really build this world. We don't really have to take care of it, whatever, or whomever built this world. uh, We'll fix it when we fuck it up. That's what they do. Uh, And that is not going to be the case. Uh, In fact, if we become so disruptive, I would wager to bet that the planet will get rid of us. Um, And I think it's trying to, at at certain points, (laughs) trying to get rid of us. Um, So the people that bring up the, the the need for an environmental impact survey, the activists that are talking about this, bring up the 1991 Grand Rapids, Minnesota, not Grand Rapids, Michigan, but Grand Rapids, Minnesota spill, which was the largest land leak, land leak in United States history. And it was caused by this company, Enbridge. It was Line 3 that did it. 
the original line three, not the not not the sequel, <laughs> which is what we're looking at now. Uh, we're looking at the sequel, uh, and and sometimes sequels uh, far worse than the original. Okay, uh, Mortal Kombat, for example, uh, fine movie, not the not the newest one that came out a little bit ago. We're talking about the ones in the '90s, sometime around uh, the the 1991 uh, Grand Rapids uh, Enbridge spill came out around the same time. All right, so when when the OG Enbridge spill was happening, the OG Mortal Kombat film was coming out, uh, and it was fine. It was a movie. Uh, it did it 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 had a plot. Some some might say, uh, you you got to see Raiden. You got to see uh, fucking Liu Kang. You got to see uh, you got to see J Johnny. You know, you got to see some of your favorites. Sonya was in there. Um. And then the second movie came out, uh, and it was uh, utter garbage. And that is what this <laughs> version of Lie 3 is. It is the Mortal Kombat 2 of pipelines, you guys. It's something that didn't need to be made, shouldn't have been made. A lot of people said, don't do it. Uh, and then a bunch of people who were trying to uh, make a fuck ton of money, uh, because the first one did okay enough, uh, decided to fucking do it anyway. And uh, and that's what we're seeing again. Uh, we're we're uh, pipelines. When it comes to pipelines, it is not a not a matter of if they will spill. It is a matter of when. So that's the first part. The second part is indigenous sovereignty. Right? They are they are literally breaking treaties uh, to come in and violate indigenous people's land to violate their homes to build this pipeline that is very much going to create havoc in their environment that is very much not going to displace these folks uh and it that they sh they don't have a right to do that they don't have a right to do that uh but they're going to right because this is a country instead of looking for alternative sources of energy uh that won't poison our planet uh this is a country that has decided to say hey fuck it let's just make more of the poison because the poison's a little bit cheaper than transitioning to a different mode of uh, of of energy, which in the long run would be a lot cheaper, and uh, and provide more energy to more people in a cleaner and more efficient way. Uh, but fuck all that. Let's make money for a little bit, uh, and that's and so so they've they've decided to violate the indigenous treaties uh, for that reason. And this is this is sort of the big one um, where where I said that it they create a hostile environment for the indigenous people. Uh, and that is because sexual assaults increase uh, when you uh, have a pipeline come through because you have people that don't live in the community coming into that, into that neighborhood uh, for long periods of time. You're, we're, we're talking a year or two to build these pipelines through these communities. So you have, uh, you know, Enbridge hires these contractors, they come through uh, and they get hired from all over the damn place um, you know, a lot of them are not local. So again, this notion of job creation and to help the local economy, eh, eh, you know, yeah, they're going to local bars and things of that sort and they'll spend their money and so on and so forth. And, and yeah, that, that might be it. But again, in the long run, it's creating a hostile environment where these people come in and they take advantage of the indigenous people, specifically women. Um, where one of the stories, and The Guardian reported this, of, of all things, right? The Guardian reported this, where this woman met this guy, and they hit it off, and things were going well, and she got invited to his place, and she accepted the invite, and when she showed up, four other dudes were in his house, and she was the only woman there, and he, like, trapped her in his room, and she felt uncomfortable, and she eventually got out without anything awful happening to her and that's like the best case scenario and all of the the the, the, the rise in sexual assaults um and sexual misconduct has gone up uh since these um these workers have come into into these towns it has also increased sex trafficking in the area because that's what sex traffickers look for they look for people that aren't native to the area because they they don't they don't know you know they might just think that oh we're getting a prostitute or whatever and no it, it, the, you are you are part of so, a, a, a sex trafficking ring um and uh, and you are encouraging it by by quote helping the economy 
so that's again, and this this kind of goes into the culture, you know, the 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 increased sexual assaults at the bars, uh, you know, in, in various different locations. So like now the people of this town don't particularly feel safe going to their watering hole, going to the dive bar that they've been going to since they turned 21 and so on and so forth. So now they can't enjoy that sort of stuff. Um, and that is that's, you know, perpetrated by these people that have uh, this like nationalistic pride mixed with hyper masculinity thrown at them constantly. Right. Like it's encouraged by this culture. Uh, they 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 are they all oh, they're they're told that, oh, well, you guys are helping. You guys are the heroes of these communities. You guys are coming in and building this pipeline. You're salt of the earth. You're literally what's building America. And you guys are are the best of the best. And uh, and people should really be throwing roses at your feet. And if they're not, then boy, howdy, are they wrong? Because you guys are the best. Uh, we're not going to pay you like you're the best. Uh, but we are going to tell you that and we are going to tell you to act like you're the best. Uh, and that means you go and take whatever the fuck you want. And that, and that culture, you know, leads to sexual assault. It leads to sexual misconduct. It leads to people, uh, you know, sex traffickers taking advantage of that. Um, you know, if and Enbridge has stayed silent on all of this stuff. They've stayed completely silent. They haven't said anything. Um, you know, the, they they basically I think the only statement that they made that the article talks about is that them saying, oh, well, you know, uh, we encourage our employees to behave in a particular manner. And if they deviate outside of that, well, you know, <laughs> just that's the whole, that's the statement. It's this a lot of head nodding and whoo furrowed brow furrowed brow that's their whole statement on it they haven't said fucking dick all so these are the issues that these guys are facing and trying to bring to the light um because of 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 the pipeline so not only is it a climate change issue it's also an indigenous issue and it's also uh, a women's rights and safety issue uh, it's also a hyper masculine issue. It's also about uh, American pride, right? This nationalistic pride that comes with it. So there's a lot of toxic elements that this pipeline is bringing to the region. Um, and not only that, so this is this is where the 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 protest kicks off. The county cops were kind of overwhelmed by what happened. More people than they anticipated showed up to this thing, which again goes to that that pride, right? That arrogance of uh, oh well we're bringing jobs and we're helping the economy for a short period of time and uh and we're bringing this en this energy resource that's going to be really important for people and it's not like there's something else that could power uh you know electricity and run cars and all that it's not like we have the technology and that technology hasn't existed for years oh no 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 right so they assume that because they're the bastions of minor economic growth in an area for a short period of time uh, that no one's going to oppose them, that these guys, these these uh, protesters and activists of these, uh, you know, that are protesting this pipeline are an anomaly. They're far. They're very, you know, they're the fringe. They're the fringe. Those are fringy people um, that 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 stay in the fringes and need to stay in the, that continue to stay in the fringes. Right. So. Uh, that's not true. Obviously, uh, they got overwhelmed, and uh, because they were overwhelmed and couldn't couldn't figure out, you know, how to maintain this crowd or kettle the protesters and all the shit that the cops do, some of these protesters hopped the fence of the work site that they were trying to block. Um, they hopped the fence. They got in. They handcuffed themselves to some of the equipment. Some of the equipment got damaged. Um, because that's something that they do, and and remember this this is this is after uh, that after the lawsuits after these activists have tried to talk to Governor Waltz to uh, overturn his decision about Enbridge, um, and all that failed. So now it's like, yeah, we have to do these demonstrations in order to show how dire this situation is and what people are willing to do in order to prevent this pipeline from being built, which includes chaining themselves up to uh, construction equipment, uh, barricading themselves in various parts of the work site to delay <clears throat> what's, uh, what's being done. So eventually more cops did show up, but um, the, this is from the, from unicorn riot. 
And they basically said, and they were there covering it. They were on the ground covering it. Um, they basically said, you know, some of these cops didn't have any markings on them. They didn't know what uh, unit they belonged to. They didn't know what jurisdiction they had. And it was only later that they found out that they were part of, uh, oh, before we get to what they were part of, uh, there were also low-flying helicopters that, that were called in. So these helicopters would fly dangerously low, kick up dirt, kick up, oh my goodness, excuse me for that yawn there. Um, they would kick up dirt, they would kick up, um, you know, debris, and they and, and kind of, you know, fire it at these, at these folks just by the mere fact that it's a low-flying helicopter. So these cops uh, belonged to a task force uh, called the Northern Lights Task Force because, yeah, that's exactly what the Aurora Borealis wants to be associated with, right? State-sponsored thugs, state-sponsored mercenaries that nonstop harbor, uh, not, or not harbor, but rather uh, kill people, innocent people of color all the time. That's what they want. That's what that's what the Aurora Borealis really wants to be associated with. I mean, that's what I think of. Like when I think of the Northern Lights, I don't think of how beautiful they are, and you know, kind of reminds you of the majesty of of the cosmos. But no, I I think of cops. I'm like, you know what this reminds me of? Fucking slave patrols from way back in the, that's Northern Light. That's what it inspired. That's exactly what they want. So yeah, naming your task force the Northern Lights fucking task force. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Now the reasoning behind creating this task force is that uh, the counties and the sheriff department, the county cops and the sheriff department, too small. They're just too small to contend with all of these protesters and all of these activists. They're coming in and they're doing all this stuff and we're just these, you know, small town cops trying to maintain some kind of civility in our place. And these guys are coming in and they're like, hey, we live here too and we don't want this. And and the cops are like, well, who cares what you want? It doesn't matter because these guys are going to pay us a fuck ton of money to protect their thing. And they just don't get the struggle that these cops have to go through, okay? So they had to create a task force. So that's why various different county cops, sheriff's department, all showed up to this protest to arrest a bunch of people. And that's what they did. They arrested these protesters. Uh, and a lot of the pro a lot of these protesters didn't get their civil rights. Uh, they couldn't call anybody. No phone calls were given. And some of them were injured and they didn't get any sort of medical attention. And some of them even went to jail like they were they were not in 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 holding. They were they they went to jail uh, and they're being illegally imprisoned, um, you know. And, and it just kind of makes you think that this task force decided that the right thing to do was arrest a bunch of protesters uh, exercising their First Amendment rights. What they could do instead is go after the sex traffickers in the area that are clearly taking advantage of this situation. You could go after the various people that are committing sexual assaults in the area. And if the, and if Enbridge, you know, if these cops actually fucking arrested these employees from Enbridge, maybe they would hire local people that know what's going on. That would discourage this type of behavior instead of try to continue encouraging it or just stay silent. You know, that's that's another thing that you could do. You, oh, well, I'm not really taking part, but I also don't have to say anything because I want to keep my job. No, the, the locals in the area would be like, fuck this job. I want to protect my the, the women in my community. So I'm going to discourage this kind of behavior. And if, if corporate has something to say about it, then great. I'll quit and fight the fight from the outside. But they don't, right? Instead, um, these county cops and sheriff departments are basically moonlighting as hired thugs or mercenaries for Enbridge. And this is not the first time that we've seen this sort of stuff happen. This sort of stuff happens all the time. Uh, we just saw this happen a few months ago, maybe two months ago, um, 
in uh, in Alabama with Amazon, where Amazon hired the police department uh, and they moonlighted as mercenaries against unionization. Corporations do this all the time, and and police departments obliged to it. They become protectors. They they you know it's it's just it's just fucking proof that these cops are not here to protect and serve us. They are here to protect and serve rich people's stuff. That's it. It this is this is proof because. Cops haven't changed a whole lot from the slave patrols, which is where they come from. That's where the origin of po American policing is, is in slave patrols, which, again, because slaves weren't seen as people, they were seen as property to rich white plantation owners. It's average middle class white people that are kind of poor, that are offered a big, large sum of money from the rich other rich white people to go protect the rich white people's stuff. Instead, these cops should quit and join the protesters because we are kind of more... Uh, the working class people need to stick together and the cops, for better or worse, are still working class people. It's just they've been duped by these fucking oligarchs to become protectors of their shit. And some of them realize it and realize that if they speak out against it, then they'll be booted out of the system. And whatever minor little change they do won't matter anymore. And that's something that, quote, good cops have to face. So they either leave or they're pushed out. That's that's why the phrase all cops are bastards comes into play. So I want to read this quote because I think it's important. Um, and, and we'll kind of wrap it up on this. Uh, I, I think this is a, a very good quote. This is from, uh, I, I apologize if I butchered this this, this lady's name, but uh, it, it Tasha Martino. Uh, she's the founder of, of the pipeline resist one of the camps that's uh, resisting the pipeline. And she said the difference between us and right wingers is we're not upset about an election. We're upset about the fact that we can't even survive. And that's what they're fighting for. They're fighting for the survival, not just of themselves, but the planet at large. Right. Uh, and she goes on to say the, that that's all we've been doing for 500 plus years is survive, survive, survive by any means necessary as an indigenous people whose roots uh, whose roots are to this land. We were meant to stand together and thrive, you know, as indigenous people, we know the way we know how to live a good life. And it's time for those who aren't from here, you know, who came here, whether it was fleeing the persecution of a church, whether it was brought here from forms of genocide and slavery, whether they came here willingly to start their new life in search of the American dream, or whether it was our indigenous relatives traveling to safety because of United States occupation, we all need to learn how to live together in a good way, and we know that way, so it's time for people to start listening to that. I think it's a pretty powerful uh, quote and why this is so important because this is about our survival as a species not just the survival of the indigenous community but all of us all of us it, 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 these pipelines continue they're going to cause more devastation they're going to cause more ecological disasters and they're, and they're going to cause more climate change disasters which is in turn going to create more refugees which is in turn going to create uh more issues with where people are going to live if places start flooding if places start becoming disaster zones people aren't going to want to live there so what happens those towns end up dying because, you know, this this entire region of the country is only known for various disasters from fucking fires to floods to hurricanes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then different parts of the country become overpopulated and over condensed. And because Amer the American government doesn't want to fucking do anything to help its people, they will go by the wayside and will say, oh, well, you know, th this oh, these these refugees coming in from. Florida or New Orleans, oh, they could be uh, dangerous people. Who knows? Let's increase the amount of cops that we have. And the cycle repeats itself. In order to prevent that, 
this is a good fight to get involved in. This this is a good fight to support. Um, okay, let me take a look at some comments. Do, 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 do. All right. Where are we at? There we go. Hey, Dinner with Franklin. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. That's very kind of you over on the Rockfin. Uh, Cynical Girl says, imagine that, a treaty violation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, Parent, uh, or parent, uh, uh, dinner with Franklin's comment there. Who would have guessed no environmental impact study either? I'm gobsmacked. Yeah. Not, I mean, none of that is shocking information. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, more, more people don't know about this sort of stuff. They think that these, these, um, pipelines just get built because, well, they followed all the rules. They did all the right things. And it's like, no, they didn't. I mean, there's proof that they didn't. Uh, you, you know, if if uh, if they'd looked at the environmental impact study, then they would know um, they would know what what the result of this is. Holly, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it is wonderful to to see you. We're uh, uh, started a little early because uh, because I don't want to bump into other live streams there. Uh, Holly points out toxic company culture or just toxic culture. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what it is. A lot of corporate culture is pretty, pretty toxic, uh, focuses more on, uh, as you point out, protecting property, protecting investments, protecting their bottom line uh, over. Um, uh, over protecting the environment and protecting peoples. So, uh Holly also points out the North Star Task Force is notorious. Yeah, they're pretty awful. All, all task force are. Uh, that was covered by the Blue Leaks, is that these task force get formed whenever they see a threat, and they basically see uh, these protesters as a threat. That's what they look at them as, which is a which is a, a goddamn shame because they're not uh, uh, they're not they're they're trying to protect the environment is what they're trying to do. Uh, Dragonata, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for for the rocket fire uh, emoji in the comment. <laughs> I'm guessing it's a positive thing. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now. Uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the Merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.